All right, so autonomous delivery is one of those things that is really kind of uh, an interesting but also huge opportunity for the delivery industry. We're gonna break it down today. My name is Paul Barron, this is TechPath. Let's dive into this, because here's, here's the scenario. We are seeing uh, a slew of micro EVs start to go into this space. That's everywhere from the Aero to the um, FUV, which is Arkimoto's unit and their deliverator. There are a lot of companies that are really vying for the potential upside of what this delivery market can bring. I wanna break down uh, several companies that are really kind of jumping into this, I think with both feet and also could be the answer to uh, the al alternative to either one, a robo delivery vehicle from Tesla or a three wheel vehicle, vehicle from an Arkimoto or an Aero down to potentially these kinds of bots that would kind of change the place. Let's talk about uh, Postmates, which is the Serve product. Uh, San Francisco partially banned the delivery robots because they obstructed pedestrians. So what Postmates did was they built they built one with eyes, turn signals, and uh, and basically a mandate to yield. So the idea was is you operate this you know remotely and you can kind of circumvent the situation with with uh, San Francisco where they don't want you know these things on the sidewalk because it's you know it's basically in the way of humans and the potential here is going to be interesting this one even has like a little help button on the touch screen uh, where you can do a video chat with customers or passersby so they can kind of summon assistance from this thing this could be a very interesting aspect with postmates obviously having the marketplace for delivery especially around food this could be one of those that uh, maybe finds its way out to full, you know, urban center delivery, you know, tight knit cities and or tight knit downtown areas of cities that could potentially go in this direction. The other one is the Amazon Scout. Now the Amazon Scout is a different one. It's, it's also a, a kind of a cooler sized rover. Uh, mainly they're trying to reduce this human to human contact. They actually did deploy this in the South, uh, which I thought was interesting it was during uh, you know the pandemic and kind of in that whole aspect. But the question here, I think, is going to be how fast, and Amazon is really kind of all over the place. They're doing things with Rivian with their delivery vans. They're looking at going with the Scout, which is a, a very interesting aspect. They've looked at drone delivery. There's a lot of, of innovation here. The question is really, I kind of think, which one is going to stick? That'll be the factor on which one of these can really go out but here's the biggest issue, and I think this is the challenge that most of these delivery systems will deal with. When you weigh out the fact that we are seeing less and less traffic in the inner cities due to what we've had in terms of the downturn over this past year, people moving out of the cities, less demand on these cities, less people working in these high rises and in these centers could reduce the need for these kinds of products or devices and open up an opportunity that is what I think is kind of a mid-range between uh, the Scout and the Postmate Serve bot with and between a three-wheel or a full-size car. And this that's maybe something like more of a micro or a sub-micro EV that would be very interesting. Um, let's also look at, at Refraction. Refraction is basically an interesting company. They raised a little bit of money, 4.2 million in their seed round. Initial prototype was based on a, a um, bicycle foundation. So this is a little bit more up geared toward the um, Arkimoto or the Aero. The difference is, is this, this cost uh, for this vehicle is gonna be considerably lower. Uh, it's called the Rev1. It's a robot designed to operate like a bike. And uh, so it's gonna run in the bike lanes rather than being on the sidewalk. So it gets away from that kind of cooler robot that's out there on the sidewalks doing this. And it also gives you the access to move it in small cities or suburban markets, which is where I think the market is going to be big. Um, and this is like a 15 mile an hour vehicle, but it does remove some of the messy issues that they have to do with uh, pedestrian dodging, uh, which is an issue because if you're staying in a bike lane, even then to a certain extent, you've got a little different kind of analysis and algorithm that has to be applied versus what you have to do when you are uh, in a vehicle lane. So there are a lot of different uh, scenarios that I think refraction could play into this market. The big one I think is gonna be the cost. If they can bring down cost, 
They can get in and out of suburban communities and go into neighborhoods and handle a delivery. This actually might be the direction, and there is a couple more that I want to talk about that kind of goes in this direction. Let's jump to Waymo. Now, Waymo, of course, is, and everybody kind of knows this as uh, the Google self-driving car project, which was expanding basically from that. It's, it was our, a, a subsidiary uh, of Alphabet formally launching Waymo. They, of course, raised a ton of money from outside investors, two and a quarter billion, I think. Uh, and their CEO, John um, Krasik, also called it uh, basically a, natu a natural extension of autonomous drive technology. Now, I've seen the Waymo product in use. It has some opportunities. There are some interesting things that are happening with Waymo. It'll be um, a big factor to see how well they can drive this out. And of course, Waymo, you can put it on to almost any vehicle. Uh, they are opening up more routes. They're doing something though it, that's more geared toward big freight delivery or large package delivery, which could kind of compete somewhat with maybe an Amazon type product. Um, but it's gonna be interesting how that one kind of plays in. I don't know if their particular strategy is to move in the direction of delivery, which is where I do think the transaction numbers are gonna be so high and the opportunity is gonna be big that, uh, that they'll go in that direction. So we'll see how Waymo comes out with this, but it does require this one being more on full self-driving with a full-size car. Now this one right here, is the one that I think is the right solution, especially for food delivery or any kind of light package delivery, and it's called the Neuro. This is more of a micro van, kind of fully automated. The big thing here is California has given it the go-ahead, the company, the go-ahead for commercial driverless delivery services for the first time. Um, so this startup kind of, I think when you look at where they're going with this, it's it's almost, it's, it's like a mini micro van but maybe the size of a, a three-wheel motorcycle or a three-wheel uh, SUV, but it's fully autonomous. This one is called the R2. It was tested. It is and isn't about for uh, going into getting permits. Uh, it's also going a little faster than some of these other vehicles like we just mentioned. This one goes up to 35 miles an hour. Uh, it's going to be restricted to fair weather conditions, which is another factor, I think, when you, you're kind of in states that don't have these inclement weather conditions. That's a down play from the device unless they start to build, uh, you know, more weather worthy uh, devices. But this one could be a big option, especially in some of the southern states and offering it as an alternative to, say, an Uber delivery or a Postmate delivery going that direction. So Neuro, definitely one to keep an eye on. Here's another company, which is a company called uh, Agility Robots, uh, Robots Plus Ford is kind of involved in this. Uh, so they're a U.S. Uh, startup, basically the size of a small, uh, that basically is building a, a robot the size of a small uh, human. It's basically a bipedal robot. It's called Digit. Um, it's up for sale. You can get these units. Uh, it's going to be interesting because it's, it's kind of taking the intervention between the street and the front porch. So could this device actually be transported and it becomes the, the thing in between? I don't know if there's a big market for this, for a biped. Um, it'll be interesting because I think we're way out before we start to see humanoid style robots really moving into this category, especially in a space like this. I think we are going to see a phase in home delivery and office delivery where people will go to the curb and or to the street and um, and get their vehicle and get their orders, and with that kind of model, we are I think we will see more and more of these kind of whether it's sidewalk style or something like what Neuro is doing, uh, which which is a little bit more in the line of that of the van delivery, uh, but at maybe a better price. The other thing is this company called UDI, which is a Chinese company. Uh, even before the pandemic, they were doing uh, obviously packaging were skyrocketing on China and elsewhere, but uh, Jack Ma, who's the owner of, uh, founder of Alibaba, basically said the company's preparing to basically handle one billion packages per day. So this is essentially the future that UDI is betting on. Uh, it's not like, unlike, you know, RoboCars, which is like the Waymo Cruz and Zooks application, this one is definitely going after, you know, goods, not people. Uh, and it's very similar to the Neuro, which is the one I just mentioned, uh, the Neolix, which is also, they're also based in Beijing, which has developed uh, 50 robot vans in 10 different Chinese cities to do mobile delivery. 
and, and in this case, disinfection service, which is very unique. Aero just actually launched a new, uh, one of their three wheel vehicles that would be come out and become a new, um, I believe it was uh, designed for vaccination. So it potentially help with that last mile logistics and something like that. But again, those are limited. I think those are limited markets where the delivery is an ongoing sustainable business model, especially around food delivery and uh, some of the services delivery in the marketplace, package delivery, things of that nature where consumers can interact with it. Some more companies that I think are interesting to watch, and these and I'm just gonna run down several of these because they there are a ton of them that we really see in this space, and that is a company called Starship. Uh, basically, they're, they're looking at maybe a four to five mile uh, radius. Uh, they're they have a platform that in, it basically enables instant delivery, which is gonna be interesting to kind of uh, deal with what they are going with. Basically, they're going after groceries, food, et cetera, delivered from stores um, at the time the customer requests via the mobile app. So again, this is kind of on-demand delivery. Maybe this one comes together. The key here is gonna be distance at only four to five miles in the range. Agile X is another company you wanna watch. Uh, Savoyki, um, Atheon, and then Teleretail. All of these just continue to pile up in this area of innovation when it comes to delivery automation. And it's one of the categories that we talk about a lot here on this show because it is a market that potentially, I wanna drop a number that we just did on Tesla being in the robo delivery area. If you went just with the, uh, and this I can remember it vividly because of the model we were creating, but if you just went with robo delivery on a global basis of restaurants around the world, there's about 15 million restaurants around the world, and only if you had say 30% of that marketplace, you're talking about the revenue opportunity for a company like Tesla or someone that could pull off robo delivery over $2 trillion a year. So this is not a small market, and that's only when you're dealing with a small percentage of density, meaning you've only, you're only delivering for a small portion of the market overall, and you're only charging a fraction of the cost that what is being charged to the Uber, uh, you know, via Uber Eats or a Postmates delivery right now, which is the big issue, because you've got a 25% charge plus other fees that you've got to deal with, and that means packaging fees, preparation, all the things that a restaurant has to do or a retail center has to do to be able to get product to you delivered versus product you coming in and picking up and eating there. These all, all of these factors are really gonna play into, I think, a huge innovation boom when it comes to companies like all of these we've just mentioned. It'll be interesting to see how these new robot boxes really do with food delivery are we close? That's the real question. Will drones come in and play a bigger part in this for air delivery of these same kinds of products? This is a very interesting time that I think a lot of, the good thing is, is that if you're in the restaurant business or any kind of retail business, there are going to be a lot of options for you to be able to get into the delivery business and be more efficient, which is gonna be a growing sector in the space for sure. We're gonna continue our coverage here on TechPath with that. Um, if you have somebody or an automate or a company that you think uh, should be here on TechPath, their CEO or their innovation lead, um, an engineer that maybe is doing some amazing things in one of these areas, whether it's EV autonomy, going into a lot of the technology that we cover here, especially around AI and where that's going to lead us uh, in a lot of these, you know, factors of, of human intervention and where we as humans are gonna be using this new technology. Please send us an email to producer at revernetworks.com. And of course, you can always hit me up on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.